How's it going, my lovely Death Disciples? I am the Shattered Reaper, and today we are going to be playing some more Dragon Age Inquisition, where last we left off, we had established some more footholds across the Hinterlands region. We defeated the apostate mages in the Witchwood, and we were also kind of trying to close some fate rifts, although we failed on one of them. But that doesn't matter. It's not important. I mean, we'll get to it eventually. We just needed to refill on some potions because that was why we lost. We didn't have enough potions and everybody was getting injured and uh, all of that stuff. So uh, that was uh, fun for the whole family. And uh, we also have been collecting some resources a whole lot. Not that that's important, but we have been doing that. So uh, that has been a huge priority for us. Um, but right now, I believe it is time that we probably uh, not only deal with the Templars, but at some point we also uh, maybe head back to Haven so that we can get to the war table and send our agents to do more missions. Like, for example, uh, maybe actually contacting my home clan so that they know that I'm okay and actually leading the Inquisition instead of just rotting in prison like I was at first. Yeah, that probably might be a good idea to do at some point, but right now, we have people to murder. Excuse me, sir. That is a bit too close and personal for my liking, so please move away and not hit me in the fire, because fire is my thing. So if you could all just please die, that'd be fantastic. <sighs> okay, good work, everybody. We killed three Templar people. I should really consider maybe using the blood of my enemies for my lipstick. I mean, it works so well for Jericho in uh, Seven Deadly Sins. It should probably work more than well for me. And like, seriously, I am picking up all of this lamb's wool, and I can't consider that being good enough for uh, using blankets for the refugees. I, I have to use it to... Uh, I have to take blankets or materials from the caches of the mages who I literally just destroyed. Seems a bit unfair to me, but okay. That I have to go searching for their caches, which none of them were in the Witchwood. Just kind of letting everybody know that part. No secret caches in the Witchwood, but secret caches elsewhere, I suppose. Oh well. Not my issue, I suppose. Uh, oh wait, I'm heading in the wrong direction for the Templars. Because, uh, I do need to take care of them. In fact, may as well just, uh... Oh wait, I think it was... It, no, that's just the broken bridge, right? Uh, so we'll be heading in the direction of the, uh, Templar quest. So we can take them out like we did with the mages. Don't know why we're able to open a burning door, but okay. <laughs> That makes it easier. Okay, this direction. Should be around somewhere. Although, did I look in here already? I did, actually, now that I recognize it. Um, yeah, I did didn't really lead anywhere, uh, so let's head over this way. I mean, it was a Templar hideout, but it wasn't the Templar encampment for some reason. And while I could deal with those enemies I saw earlier, I just don't have the time. I'm way too busy, so uh, they're just gonna have to wait for their turn to die. That's just how it be. Now, let's see. This is where it said the Templars are, right? First things first. Gotta take materials and harvest them for my purposes. I definitely have plenty of iron for those weapons. Hmm. Templar shield, not important. I was hoping for some quest blankets at some point, but fine. Lauren Cameron. Okay, so it must be here then. All right then. Time to kill some Templars. Templars have secured a position ahead. So I have noticed. Good thing one of them is now dead. 
Now blow up and die. Would you be would you be a dear enough for me for that to happen? I'm gonna continue shooting you all in the head if you don't die soon enough. That would be absolutely tragic. Except not really, because well I mean, not much I'd ruin by shooting you in the face. Definitely got plenty of lamb's wool to go around. Let's see now, did we clear out the- oh no, there's still plenty more. Now all of you blow up and die, would you? <laughs> I really do have to wonder just how many arrows it really is supposed to take to kill these guys. Alright, that all of them? Weapon fragments, okay, so we have more ways to research the enemy. Uh, bowstring, weapon fragments, all good for our warriors to understand and research. Balance hunting longbow. Hmm. And some gold, take all of that. And what's in here? Ring of attack. Ooh, firm bow grip, pointed maul. Give me all of that if you don't mind. And ooh, royal elf root. I do have to wonder what the codex is for that. Uh, let's see if we can find it. Um, magic, uh, laces. Must be in crafting materials. Oh, we got this. Archers, to fight an enemy with a bow or crossbow is simple, although not always easy. A guard with a crossbow must crank his weapon after each shot. If there is only one such enemy, seek cover and give him cause to waste his shot. Then close upon him before he may fire again. If there are many, close their flanks so you face one guard directly using him as a second shield. And no other guard has a clean shot at your unprotected back. You don't move to the middle of their ranks and rely upon them, hesitating to risk hitting one another. A soldier with a short bow is a little more dangerous. Attack him as you would an enemy with a crossbow, but accept that he will likely fire again. Approach with your shield up, even if you must sacrifice speed. Few soldiers are true masters of the bow. Those who do not fumble their draw in fear will fire a shot quickly, so it is more likely to glance off your armor or shield than punch through. Few soldiers have the skill or strength to make good use of a longbow. Respect those who do. Again, such an enemy covers the only defense. Move quickly across his field of vision, forcing him to compensate for your movement. Do not charge directly unless your allies can distract him. A fully drawn longbow can drive an arrow through a chevalier's plate at a hundred yards. <laughs> well, we are pretty good at that. A fight between an archer and a chevalier is a test of cunning versus patience. We are too often patient, heavily armored as we are, and faced with lightly armored foes who would harass us. While archers frustrate me as they do most chevaliers, it is good that we fight them so we remember how to be cunning, how to break an opponent's patience. An excerpt from a meditation upon the use of blades by Swordmaster Massage de Jean Main. Required reading at the Academy des Chevaliers. Foot soldier, blade. If you're forced to fight in such a manner, you must decide whether you will fight as a duelist, one-handed, or as a chevalier. If the former, drop your back leg away to tighten your center target as you have no shield to cover your body or second weapon to bring into range. Focus on a quick attack and give ground freely when you cannot find an advantage. If the latter, rely on your vambrace and gauntlet as a shield and try to wrench your opponent's weapon away. My left arm bears the scars of such efforts, but my opponents bear worse. Better still, do not lose your shield at all, but battles are not a place of perfection. Except for a meditation, blah blah blah. I think it. Yeah, I, I really do not like when they do this for the uh, codexes. When they have you at the bottom just because it was at the bottom for the other. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I face Antivon Duelists, Feraldin and Ash Warriors, and Fog Warrior Skirmishers. When we strip away the titles and tricks, they are simply men who want to see their enemies dead but need a hand free to manage it. Duelists favor a thinner target over the offensive strength of a main gosh. Ash Warriors need a hand to guide their Mabari and a lighter weapon to take advantage of the openings their dogs leave. While fog wires rely on stealth and speed too much to use a heavy shield. Not gonna read that. Guardsman. Coming away from battle with his sheep. Oh, wait. A novice believes his sword of the utmost importance and a shield there to show his family's colors. All scoff at such foolishness. But the older student, thinking a shield a sign from the maker that he cannot be struck down, is a little wiser. A warrior coming away from battle with his shield dented and ripped away may be praised for bravery. A warrior coming away with a shield merely scratched should be praised for skill. 
Remember that every metal shield was beaten into shape and may be beaten out of it. Even a blow that does not tear a hole drives impact through your arm and shoulder, where shock and pain will wear down even the strongest warrior. In a duel against a single opponent, you may seek a quick advantage in taking a blow directly to the shield in order to strike one in return. If you are protecting another, you may have no choice. In all other cases against one opponent or many, it is better to hide the movement of your hips and shoulders behind your shield, forcing enemies to focus on it rather than you. This is also true when facing, when fighting an opponent so armed your goal is not the shield, but the man behind it. Circling or locking shields may gain you an advantageous speed, uh, an advantageous position, failing that rain below, uh, blows upon it, his defenses until he tires and his guard grows sloppy. If you are neither skilled enough to slip past him, nor fit enough to wear him down, you will most likely die. An excerpt from a meditation upon the use of blades. And mage. Mages are not demons or monsters, they are men and women like any other. Except for their skill with a weapon, few are given. I see this to be clear that I do not think all mages should be put to the sword, as some believe. However, every mage walks through life with a blade drawn and ready. Whether they wish it or not, those who insist that mages are harmless must ask how the apostates who fling fire when the Templars attack learned how to kill so well. We in the academy know well that no skill comes without practice. If you fight a mage, you must close with him, or her, regardless of the danger, or risk being overwhelmed. A mage's strike barely hits with the force of a trained chevalier's blade, but often carries unnatural energies. Fire that boils a man inside his armor, lightning that seals the strength from his limbs and so forth. To hold back is to give him the time to alter the battlefield to their advantage in some fashion, whether he summons a wall of ice, a demonic ally, or magical flames to strengthen the blade of his guards. We know that the warrior who controls the battlefield is most often the victor. You must keep him reacting to you and continue your attack. Mages rarely wear heavy armor, but their magic can shield them as effectively as your own plate. I have said many times to watch the hips and arms of your opponent instead of the hands, but with the mage, the hands and arms may be your only clue. If his body is protected from your blade, attempt to tangle his arms or bear him to the ground. It's not elegant or honorable, but there is no honor when fighting a mage. There is only, su there is only survival. Except for meditation upon the use of blades. And let's see, Spellbinder. Spellbinder, personally, there is no risk of these enchanted books falling into the wrong hands. Still, the books are in their hands, and I am concerned. Although the practice has spread... Oh, wait, oops. I confess myself troubled by the rise in mages binding uh, multiple spirits to a single object. Among the mortality, mortalitasi, interacting with spirits is a, sp is a serious, even intimidating, and intimate undertaking. These spellbinders, as they call themselves, bind many simple spirits, usually to books or other easily compartmentalized objects set with runes, and they have stripped the interaction with spirits of its importance, reducing it to a mere mechanical exercise. That such magic is useful to the spellbinder, I do not argue. Although the power contained in these objects is difficult to focus, the diffused magic can easily distribute energy across a broad area, augmenting the mage's allies. The spellbinders insist that no individual spirit is capable of breaking their bindings, and that the spirits cannot cooperate well enough to effect an escape together. Furthermore, they maintain that because the bindings are all tied to the spellbinder personally, there is no risk of these enchanted books falling into the wrong hands. Still, the books are in their hands, and I'm concerned. Although the practice has spread across most of Thedos by now, it seems it to have originated in Tevinter. These mages bind spirits and demons too readily, and it is not natural for spirits to remain in this world for any great length of time. Our maker places a veil between our world and the fate for a reason, after all. Who are we to second-guess his wishes? Perhaps I have grown more reverent in my old age. Probably. An excerpt from Life Among the Dead by Enchanter Rodamante von Hegel, senior member of the Mortalitasi. Okay, and let's see. Groups. What ones haven't I read about? Rebel mages. Whereas the circle was established not merely to protect the world from mages, but also to allow mages to practice their arts safely and without fear, and whereas under Lord Seeker Lambert's command, the Templars want to protect all people, including mages, from the harmful effects of magic, have instead persecuted mages with such biased judgment as to worsen the problems they were meant to mitigate, and whereas the right of tranquility intended as a tool of last resort to stop uncontrolled mages from hurting themselves or others, has instead been used for punitive and political purposes to silence dissent and inhibit civilized discourse, and, whereas Andraste herself intended the relationship between Major Templar to be one of practitioner and protector, not prisoner and jailer, and this contract has been broken, leaving mages in fear for their lives from those sworn to protect them. Now, therefore, the Circle of Magi declares the following. 
We, the mages of Ferelden and Orlay, do hereby dissolve the circles and renounce our sworn submission to the Order of the Templars, effective immediately. We reiterate Andraste's assertion that magic was made to serve man, not rule over him, and state unequivocally that we will use our abilities only to defend ourselves from those who would see us relinquish our lives and freedoms under the presumption of guilt for crimes we have not committed. We condemn those practitioners of magic who through illness of mind or understandable but misguided anger at those who oppress them, would use their maker-given powers to threaten innocent lives, and we pledge to aid any legitimate and impartial government in bringing these lawless apostates to justice. We look earnestly to a future of cooperation between all peoples of Thedos, free from persecution and prejudice, and hope to build a better world alongside all who approach us with friendship instead of fear. Yours in service to Adraste and the Maker, the Free Mages of Thedos. Leaflet distributed in towns and villages across Orle and Ferelden. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like I'm more on the side of the mages with this. I mean, the Templars kind of not seeming like the best people. Oh, speaking of, the Templar Order end of an accord. Most holy, the Seekers are well aware of the past you played in the Rebellion. You call me to the Grand Cathedral in the middle of the night on urgent business, only to speak of trivial matters, and then when I return to the White Spire, I discover chaos, and one of your agents in the midst of the apostates. Did you think I would not notice? Do you believe yourself above repercussions for such actions? It was a dark day when the Chantry placed such an incapable woman upon the Sunburst throne. I will not stand idle and watch you destroy what ages of tradition and righteousness have built. In the twentieth year of the Divine Age, the Navarin Accord was signed. The Seekers of Truth lowered our banner and agreed to serve under the Chantry's right hand, and together we created the Circle of the Magi. With the Circle no more, I hereby declare the Accord null and void. Neither the Seekers of Truth nor the Templar Order recognize Chantry authority, and instead we will perform the Maker's work as it was meant to be done as we see fit. Signed this day on the fortieth year of the Dragon Age, Lord Seeker Lambert von Reeves. Letter sent to Divine Justinia from the former Lord Seeker. Yeah, the Templars are just kind of douches. I, I, don't, I don't see why we have people who are like, the Templars might be such great guys. Oh, really? Have you read what they said at all? Because they don't seem like very nice people. The Rebels seem to actually have more of an understanding than the Templars do. Just saying. Templar Order traditional role. Often portrayed as stoic and grim, the Order of Templars was created as the martial arm of the Chantry. Armed with the ability to dispel and resist magic, in addition to their formidable combat talents, Templars are uniquely qualified to act as both a foil for apostates, mages who refuse to submit to the authority of the Circle, and a first line of defense against the dark powers of blood mages and abominations. While mages often resist the Templars as symbols of the Chantry's control over magic, the people of Thedos see them as saviors and holy warriors, champions of all that is good, armed with piety enough to protect the world from the ravages of foul magic. <laughs> Not buying it. In reality, the Chantry's militant arm looks first for skilled warriors with unshakable faith in the Maker. Yeah, that's a bit of a problem, wouldn't you say? With a flawless moral center as a secondary concern. Yeah, how well's that working for you? Not too well, I'd say. Templars must carry out their duty with an emotional distance, and the Order for Templars prefers soldiers with religious fervor and absolute loyalty over paragons of virtue who might question orders when it comes time to make difficult choices. The Templars' power derives from the substance lyrium, a mineral believed to be the raw element of creation. While mages use lyrium in their arcane spells and rituals, Templars ingest the primordial mineral to enhance their abilities to resist and dispel magic. Lyrium use is regulated by the Chantry, but some Templars suffer from Lyrium addiction, the effects of which include paranoia, obsession, and dementia. Templars knowingly submit themselves to this treatment in this service to the Order and the Maker. It is this sense of ruthless piety that most frightens mages when they draw the Templars' attention. When the Templars are sent to eliminate a possible blood mage, there is no reasoning with them. And if the Templars are prepared, the mage's magic is all but useless. Driven by their faith, the Templars are one of the most feared and respected forces in Thedas. From patterns within fro with informed by Halden, first enchanter of Starkhaven, 880 blessed. Um... Yeah, I'm gonna go with, uh, Templars are crazy-ass people. That's what I'm going with. And, uh, I doubt anybody could really change my mind on that. If I'm being perfectly honest. So die, crazy bitch! Is he dead? 
I don't think, no, he isn't dead. Keep shooting him, Ben! Blow him up again! Okay, so at least we got that uh, whole thing figured out. The Swedish fingers. Hmm. Barreled in long sword grip. 780 damage per second. Ooh, and we get more power. Very nice. And we also get a simple pendant. I wonder if this might work with someone. Um, Cassandra, I think I have something for you. Uh, you still have that regular, um, what is that blade? Uh, the cap you have an Inquisition longsword, and it kind of sucks. Not to worry, I have the perfect replacement. Uh, okay, so there's less percentage of attack, but you have more damage with this, plus way more buffs. So, uh, you know what? I'm gonna have you equip this. So, yeah. I think we're good here. And, uh, let's see. What other things have I not... Uh, okay. Uh, let me just get all of these things out of the way. So, uh, there we go. And, uh, armor. Reinforced scout armor. Is that better than what you have? And is it... Uh, it is better than what you have, actually. Uh, is it better than what I have, though? Yeah, it is actually way better than what I have. But I like the dragon armor, and unless I can make this look like the dragon armor, I'm not putting it on. I need... Uh, oh, and it also requires level 6. So, uh, we'd also need to do that. Um, like... Okay, Kinari trained. Free March's helmet, free March's helmet... And, uh, accessories. Enhanced challenge ring. Restriction warrior only. So, uh... You can go ahead and put that on. Ring of attack. Hmm... I'm gonna put that on. And, uh, enhanced parry ring. Increase ability damage by 30%. Put that on my other ha hand. Very nice. Enhance with Winter's Grass Ring, and uh, that's pretty much it. Okay. I think we're good then. Perfect. Now then, what's in here? So, Templars and Mages have been taken care of in the area. Very good. And we'll take all of that. And also take this iron. We still need to go to the War Room, so uh, wherever fast travel is available, I think we should probably take that opportunity and uh, also get rid of that as well. Uh, let's see. We do still have some uh, rifts to take care of, I believe. It, I think we saw one over here. Is where I last died. So, uh, this time, I'm thinking we will be better prepared, especially with our new potions, and oops, sorry about that. Because I'm more than certain that letter mentioned something about, um, going north for the river. And, uh, this direction is north. There, not only should there be a rift, but there also should be, uh, something else. I don't know what, but there should be something else. Uh, but we will find out. After collecting some spindleweed. <laughs> and more spindleweed. <laughs> Anything else? More spindleweed, as expected. And even more. <laughs> Just how much spindleweed am I gonna find? Who knows? For an on ravine, okay. There's the rift, and we're gonna go ahead and take care of it. Can I... Oh, yeah, there we go. Ow! Can you not do your teleportation bullshit here? That is very rude. Thank you. I'm gonna blow you up just for that. Besides, it kind of hurt. Somewhat, but not really. Is he dead? Uh, well, if he is, I'm just gonna go ahead and disrupt the, uh, rift here. There we go. Okay, we got more stuff taken care of. Now just kill the rest of the demons. Did, did, 
Did you just hide under there? Okay, Cassandra, you used a potion. Great. Awesome. Can blow you up. Disrupt the rip again. There we go. Anyone else to be concerned about? I think a few, it looks like. Kill a teleportation, people. Oh, damn, Cassandra is getting wrecked down there. Uh oh. Oh, there's two of them. Not good. Oh, ow. Okay, this one might be a little bit of a challenge. I got this one. Don't worry. Just blow up and die. Why are you not dying? You should be dying. Please die. I am the only one left. That is bull. Okay, not to self, that rift is a little bit stronger than I uh, than I thought it would be. So um, maybe save that one for later, and uh, move on to other things. Uh, let's go first discover this landmark. I think that'll be more of an appropriate uh, challenge at the moment after all that. Jeez, you think the Templars would be the worst thing I'd have to deal with, but no, it's just that rift. I mean, fair enough, it is letting in spirits and demons, but still, dealt with plenty of those already. Oh, that's right, and I still have to uh, hunt for some ram meat as well, which I have yet to find anywhere. So, I have caches that I need to find, but have not been found anywhere, and I also have to hunt rams that I have yet to also find. Yeah, that's, that's basically just how this has been going. I want... Oh, wait, but there's also, uh, something worth exploring over here, so, uh, the Oku, the Okulurum. I want to check through that. There it is, over here. And along with some embers. Out here. And for what purpose? Uh, well, why don't I find out and just oh, look through it? Certain objects in the distance. I am not familiar with such magic. Of course, it had to be a skull that lights up creepy shit. I mean, yeah, but we found something somewhere. Oh, and another over there, another there. And, uh, where might that last one be? Don't know what shards of what uh, they are, but, um, around somewhere. Oh, there we go, all shards spotted. Shards in the Hinterlands. Uh, don't know what these shards are for, but you know what? I'm gonna find them. I'll take care of, uh, things later. I need to find some shards. And I found four of them here. In this area, so I'm gonna go and look for them. I know one of them was in that burning house, one of them was in that castle fort. And, uh, another was, like, in the woods, or I think the witch woods. Okay, so one of them was in this house. Sometimes I forget I can jump in this game. Oh, yep, there's a shard piece in there. I'll take you. That's Investigate the, the shard's operation. Right. Not ominous at all. Sharp-eyed? Uh, no, not ominous at all. It just means I have a very good eye, is all. Now, let's see. There was another over here, because there were two that were very close by. Uh, and the castle was one of those that were close by. Question is, how close were they again? Oh wait, there it is.
Don't mind if I do. Now, I have no idea what these shards are for, but we will find out, I'm certain. Along with why I am collecting all of these elf roots. Not that there really needs to be a reason for it, but, you know, I'm sure people are wondering. Oh wait, are those my troops? Sorry, I thought you were enemies because everybody around here has been trying to kill me. Resources. Commander's orders. No small task given recent troubles, but I've some supplies here you may find useful. I mean, it's a dagger which for other people might have been useful if I were like a dual wielding row, but not really for me. Sorry. You think the Inquisition could maybe find out what these things are? Yes, why do you think I'm collecting them? Besides, I am the Inquisition and oh Oh, things are more peaceful around here. Oh, that's right, because I killed all the Templars and mages that were going around and killing everyone. Oh, how nice. It's nice to be able to go around here without having to murder everybody that's in sight. Which, I mean, sure, in its own way it's fun, but uh, at the same time, you know, gotta have a little bit of a break. Anyway, uh, shards in the opposite direction. Oops. Oh, well. Uh, better go and find it then. Somewhere in this direction, I think. <sighs> Things are definitely more peaceful around here. Just blissful quiet. Just a lovely stroll in the woods. No Templars. No mages. Everything is just perfect and all under the peaceful order of the Inquisition. Oh wait, oops, I'm, I, I headed in the wrong direction again. What is wrong with me and my sense of directions? Just do not trust me when I am giving directions. Just always have a little bit of skepticism on whether I am going the right way or not. And oh, another chest that you guys decided to leave me things. Hopefully it's more useful than the last one. Keen Rosh Vatar. Vitar. I mean, okay, um, sure. I, I don't really need helmets. I mean, I've got one. And, uh, I don't really find too much use in armor. I prefer weapons, but okay. Thanks anyway for the thought. I mean, I already got the best armor in town, although I could use a more stylish helmet, I will admit, but I don't think that one's it. I need a helmet that suits my status. My status as Grand Imperial Inquisitor of the Dragon. Okay, a little bit to the left. Or, I mean, not... <laughs> See, this is what I mean about directions and my terribleness with them. I can't even tell left from right, even though I should. What is wrong with me? Anyway, I shared somewhere over here. Over to this direction. Ah, oh, there you are. Alright, all shards found and taken care of. Uh, once we get the chance, I'll go ahead and head back to the, uh, head back to Haven so that we can research this, and also so that we can, uh, make out some new orders in the war room. And also, to have plenty more elf root. Anyway, back to where we are going. Uh, I think we were heading to the landmark. At some point, I really just need to... St I'm, I'm going to stop at that one. Okay, maybe this one. Okay, th I'm fine. I'm fine. This is enough. I have collected enough along... Unless they are directly in my path, I am not going to bother with those materials because I have too many things I need to deal with right now. I am the Grand Inquisitor, and I cannot continue to feed into my addiction of collecting materials for my own desires. You need to stop that at once. Don't really have anything for Corporal Vale at the moment. Wait. That wasn't directly in my path, but I, I, I... Shut up. Okay, there's supposed to be some landmark over this way. Okay. 
what is wrong with me? Why can't I stop collecting things? Why can't I stop myself? I don't understand. Let's see, it should be in this direction, right? I think, maybe, probably. Kalinod's foothold. Oh wait, yeah, I went this way before. Oh, and there's another skull thingy. Mm -hmm. Let, let's look through the skull thingy. It's gonna, it's gonna take a more of my time, but whatever. I don't care. It's a, it's a, it's a glowing skull, okay? How do you expect me to ignore that? It, it is simply just, uh, it is just absolutely unreasonable for anyone to think that it'd be reasonable for me to ignore a glowing skull. Extremely unreasonable. Absolutely unreasonable, especially to, to even think of reasons to question the Grand Inqui Imperial Inquisitor. Just rude. Oh, wait a minute. This seems like a secret camp. Please tell me there's a cache here for blankets. Okay, there's silk and lambs. Well, I mean, silk makes nice... It's nice. Can we... Are we allowed to make blankets out of silk? That should work. Or do we have to be that picky? Oh, shard over there. Shard over there. And there. And also there. Okay, all of them found. Again. <gasps> oh, wait. Is that a ram? Please tell me that's a ram so that I can work even more on my quests. <gasps> yes! Rams! Kill them! Kill the rams! Okay, we got one. Ram leather and ram meat. Perfect. Oh, and I also needed a leather for the uh, boxes. Perfect. Okay, that works. <gasps> Such an irresponsible use of magic. The mages here are a little more than animals. If you are, I don't know what you're talking about, really. But I am too busy murdering. Uh, oh wait! Oh no! 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 Not that one! No! I did not mean to kill you. Oh, I killed an innocent creature for no reason. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, little Finnick. I'm sorry. Anyway, there, there are spirits that need taken care of. And need to be blown the fuck up. You mean two down, Cassandra. Learn to count. Learn to count, woman. Okay, I'll get closer so that I can disrupt the rift. Uh, oh wait, never mind. Okay, uh, disrupt on how close do I have to be? Close it. Cassandra just standing there being all like, nah, I don't need to look at that explosion. I'm too much of a boss for that kind of thing. Anyway, we got a uh, rift close on the outskirts, so good. Oh, uh. Uh, Templars killed your husband? You're saying the Templars attacked your husband? I. He was digging out a stump. The fools couldn't tell a shovel from a mage's staff. Had to be safe, they said. Rebels everywhere attacking by surprise, sick bastards. They took the ring I gave him on our wedding day in case it was magic. Farewell. Hmm. Uh, okay, that's all we have to okay, yeah, recover the farmer's ring from the Templars. I mean, we already killed the Templars. I don't know. Do we have that solved? I, I don't know. I, I really don't. Do we have a ring anywhere that uh, that might be hers? I don't. I don't know. Why don't we talk to her again? Where see. The Templars? They don't care who they kill anymore. Nope, I do not have the ring. Apparently, I guess I have to go all the way back to their hideout to see if there is a ring that belonged to her husband, even though I just killed the Templars. 
Oh wait, is that in the elements? The posse mage is a supply cache is hidden in the area. Oh, what do you know? I could also work on this. Find this armor and some gold. I also want to. No, not gonna kill the finnick. But I do know there are rams as well, so why don't we uh, take some more of those and oh, a fire essence for some research purposes. Okay. Not sure who we got the fire essence from, but, uh, we'll take it. Anyway, more rams. We gotta hunt him. It is necessary. As well as the elf root. That is also very necessary. Where did the rams go? I know I saw them. Oh, there it is. Don't think you can hide from me! They might just have to be sli they might just have to deal with the fact that the rams have a few arrows in their meat and also may have been touched by ice magic and are a bit frozen, but hopefully they don't mind. Anyway, we got enough leather for the uh, dwarven puzzle box at least. Stop running away! Don't you understand how important your delicious meat is? We have people that need to eat, damn it. Understand it. Okay, we need to kill four more. Okay, and apparently I missed some over here, so best not waste it. Oh, Fennec for it. From the Fennec I killed! I feel sadness. And more ram meat. And more ram meat. I don't know why it has to be specifically ram meat, but... Eh, uh, orders are orders, I suppose. B these people are pecky eaters, despite being refugees. They're just like, we lost everything, but I'd like to have a ram's meat with a little bit of salt in it. Oh, whatever. It, it, it has... Um, rams do have plenty of meat, granted, so... I mean, like... Hmm. I know there should be more rams popping. Uh, there's one. Okay, that's one. Now we just need to get one more. And we'll be good. Left food for the refugees. Uh, where might that last ram be, though? Because I know there should be more popping up, but not the finnick, not the finnick. I know rams are supposed to be spawning, so where are the rams? One of them spawned right in front of me earlier. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Okay, ram, I know I just killed a lot of your brethren, but you have to die too. I'm sorry, but the circle of life and circle of death... Oh, hello, crows, eating this, uh, dead hunter guy. Is he someone I was supposed to know? Did someone talk about this guy, or no? Is he just there? Oh well, anyway. We got the ram meat for the hunter. And now, apparently, we are in the location for the, uh, caches, shards, and the hinterlands. So why are we going to take care of that while we're here? Because I've been looking for I have been looking everywhere for those things. And I am going to find it! So somewhere over in this direction. Oh, and apparently there are enemies that need to die. I don't know who they are, but they need to die. I mean, they declared themselves our enemies just by uh, their hostility and their icon, so. Oh, they had lamb's wool. How dare they! Don't mind me using my roguery to enter this burning building that somehow is still standing, but let's not question it. Apparently, the building itself has not been... Uh, whatever. A page from a journal, Edges Scorched. The Templars were attacking the peasants we'd taken food from. They wanted to make certain that everyone fought to the death, rather than help us. We took them by surprise with ice and lightning, and several were dead before they even saw us. So much for all that Templar discipline. 
The brutes are off the leech just as much as we are now. Still, there were enough of them to damp our magic, and the cell swords died fast when it came to blows. We've fallen back into the peasants' home. It's sturdy enough in here, and it looks like the peasants didn't give up at all their food after all. The door's locked, and the Templars gave up trying to force it after we killed the last fool who tried. I can hear them out there doing something out in the trees. Whatever they try, we'll be ready. We're never going back to any circle. Even real Templars couldn't stop us, and these glorified bandits are no better than we are. From a page scorched around the edges, apparently torn from a journal. Well, I mean, you did also steal food, so you're not really much of a better person now, are you? But I'm pretty sure that was not really what... Uh, they didn't really care, now did they? Now, what is this over here? Crystal Grace? Oh, okay. Uh, well, we got something for the puzzle box. I, that's something. I kind of want to check that out, really. Um, crafting materials. I also didn't, uh, there was also the Embryum that I already kind of clicked on. Embryums are flowers from the Orchid family. Its therapeutic qualities were actually discovered because of the Embryum's exceptional beauty. The beloved daughter of Lord Ignis Polenk of Orlais fell victim to a terrible sickness of the lungs, which her healers were unable to cure. Thinking the girl would soon perish, her parents surrounded her bed with brightly colored flowers, hoping that they would bring some warmth and cheer in her last days. Oddly enough, the girl began to recover from the illness and grew stronger each day. Her parents were baffled, but overjoyed. The healers eventually learned that the fragrance of one of the flowers eased the child's breathing. The flower was an embryum and later became known as the Salubrious Embryum. The other variant has certain magical properties, is known as Dark Embryum. Hmm. An excerpt from the Botanical Compendium by Ines Arancia Botanist. And Crystal Grace. The flowers of the Crystal Grace plant are appreciated for their beauty as well as their medicinal value. Pale blue and shaped like delicate crystal bells, the flowers should almost tinkle in the breeze. In fact, I have heard a tale of an Orlesian lady who ordered Crystal Grace to be planted all over her bower, then hired a mage from the White Spire to enchant them to do just that. Eventually, she grew tired of the chiming and set fire to her lawn in a fit of pique. Let us learn from this. These plants were created exactly as our maker intended. Our interference rarely improves them. An excerpt from the Botanical Compendium by Ines Arancia Botanis. Well, screw that lady. What's wrong with her? Anyway, more creatures to learn about. Fennec, my dearest and best father and lord. You are strong and fair and obviously the most handsome Arl in all of Feraldin. I want a Fennec. Please, please, please get one for me. I saw a picture in a book that Bridget was carrying for Master Fergal, and it is the fluffiest and most delightful creature I have ever seen. The book says that they live in the mountains and eat voles and repulsive things like that. When I get mine, I will feed it only nice things like cake and pearls. Please, please, please send someone to catch one. I really need one right now. Ruby wants company. It's not my fault Primmy and Bobble broke. Don't believe anything Eileen says. Please, I will promise I will spend no more gold on silks this month. It's too cold anyway. Your most loving and obedient daughter, Habrin. Now from Habrin Bryland to her father, Leonis Bryland, Arl of South Reach, written in 931 Dragon. Reports indicate that Habrin did receive a white fox's gift from her father. Later that month, she promptly lost it down a well. That bitch deserves to die. Ram Mountains. Uh, oh, wait. The ram is a marvelous creature. Its wool makes the best lining for winter coats this side of the mountain. The horns and bones can be crushed into powder and mixed with the soil for a healthy crop or charred and ground into an ink powder. The hide makes a good cover in a window against the winds. So you can burn the dung in a pinch, melt down its fat for candles. I haven't even mentioned the meat. With a full-grown ram, you could make a stew big enough for a village and, half enough, and have enough left over for a week. So there will be no more complaining about being paid in sheep for your work during the harvest. With that ram and a few, we and a few ewes, you can start your own flock. You're lucky to have them handed to you instead of needing to go and tame a wild one. Listen to your father for once. Take care of those animals and they'll take care of you. Letter from a feral and father to his son. And I wonder about the characters. What ones have I not read? Um, oh wait. I have not read Liliana? Interesting. She has many names. Most known her as, know her as Sister Liliana or the Nightingale. Some refuse to speak her name at all, referring to her only as the left hand of the divine, the shadow behind the sunburst throne. The spy master Marjolaine trained Leliana from a young age. For years, Leliana was Marjolaine's instrument in the great game of Orlais. While Leliana was devoted to Marjolaine, the reverse was not true. Marjolaine betrayed Leliana and almost succeeded in killing her. 
Liliana survived the betrayal thanks to revered mother Dorothea. Following this betrayal, Liliana spent several years in a cloister in Ferelden, hiding from her past. Inspired by revered mother Dorothea, Liliana dedicated herself to her faith, discovering peace in a simple life of devotion. But when the fifth blight began, she received what she believed was a vision of the Maker. This prompted her to leave her sanctuary, taking up arms against the Darkspawn. Several years after the defeat of the Ark Demon, Liliana received a summons from Dorothea, now Divine Justinia V. She returned to Orlade to become an agent of the Sunburst Throne. Justinia perished in the explosion that destroyed div the Divine Conclave, and Liliana became a founding member and spymaster of the New Inquisition. Josephine Montillette. Let's see what you got. Josephine Montillette is a noble from the nation of Antiva. She was educated in Val Royer, where she built connections among the court. Once she finished her schooling at a surprisingly young age, Lady M Montilliet became the official diplomat between King Fulgino of Antiva to Empress Céline of Orléans. The appointment suits her. She is well-trained, familiar with many forms of etiquette, and by all accounts a skilled negotiator. Um, if that endorsement does not suffice, Josephine is a personal friend. I have faith in her. We require someone both influential and trustworthy to be an ambassador for the Inquisition. You cannot tell me you would prefer to take the job yourself, Sister Liliana. <laughs> Be like, girl, I know you don't like dealing with that whole diplomacy thing, so why don't I just go ahead and get someone who actually knows what they're doing? <laughs> um, let's see. Truth is far worse. I would spare you... Uh, let's see. Cullen, did I read you already? Uh, Truth is far worse. I would spare you that. What remains of Kirkwall's Templars have been under my command for the past few years. We have done what we could to assist the city's recovery to restore some semblance of order, but my time here is done. Seeker Pentagas has approached me. She wishes to stop the war between mages and Templars. She has been recruiting men and women to the cause and wishes me to oversee the group's military concerns. If the Conclave goes well, then we will not be needed. If not, we stand ready. I decide to take Seeker Pentagas's offer. The Circles have fallen. I can give no more to the Templar Order, nor it to me. The Maker has shown me a new path. I must take it. Excerpt from a letter sent to the South Reach by Commander Cullen. And magic. What things have I not read about? Oculara! A skull set upon a staff. These macabre artifacts cause magical shards in the area to glow with magical radiance when a viewer looks through the eye of the skull. And Vitar. After extensive study of the Kunari specimens you, ki uh, you kindly provided, I've come to the conclusion that the painted markings on their face and body are not, in fact, solely for ceremonial purposes, but provide a practical benefit. Oh, I'm certain there is some cultural significance to the patterns and colors they choose, but the Kunari do nothing without purpose, yes? They call these markings Vitar, which in their tongue means poison armor. It's called this because the markings are magical in nature and actually harden their skin to an iron-like quality without hindering flexibility. And my analysis says the paint consists largely of poison. It's mixed with something else. Blood? Perhaps their own? And that neutralizes the poison, but only for one with Kunari's uh, physiology. Anyone else would perish almost instantly, which reminds me, I'll kindly require another body slave. Um. Okay, moving on. The process activates the magical qualities of the poison, which provides the protective effects almost in the same manner that lyrium runes do. How this works and whether it can be used for our purposes will require further study. Perhaps some live specimens this time? From a letter written by Namari, Namari, uh, Nemiria Oreganus, apprentice to Magister Varus, Dragon 932. I am disturbed now. Um, one need only stroll through the Denerin market to appreciate Ferelden's resilience. You would be hard-pressed to believe that Darkspawn ravages the city within our lifetime. Scars remain for the people who live through it, but life moves forward. Now children play in the streets, children for whom the blight is a story their parents tell. I once heard a small boy ask what a darkspawn was. To him, it was only a word he heard from the older youths. We teach that a learned child is a blessing upon his parents and unto the maker. Antheraste, forgive me, but I felt joy at his smiling ignorance. The actions of our rulers are thus a puzzle to me. Despite the events of Kirkwall, Farrelden continues to offer refuge to the rebel mages, which will only bring trouble to our doorsteps. It already has. Rumors among the merchants suggest that Dar Starkhaven places sanctions on trade as a sign of protest. One hears of conflict in the hinterlands between Templars and mages. Mother Diana says I am ac to accompany her to the Conclave in ha Haven. She says to have faith in Divine Justinia and that whatever comes, we shall see the Maker's will done. I think of those smiling children who have not grown up with death and fear, and I pray it is so. A letter from Sister Kira of the Denerim Chantry to her sister in the Free Marches. 
Okay, I'm not gonna read anymore because uh, already using up enough time. But it is interesting to learn more lore. Let's see now. Oh, right, in the elements. I still did not find out where those blankets are. It's supposed to be around here. Oh! Mark Cackle. Okay, we found one of them. This must be one of the caches recruit Whittle mentioned. Hmm. Okay. And uh, there is a camp location over here, and I am tempted to go and find it. Again, I really should be heading back to Haven, but uh... mm, actually, it seems like it's on the other side of the mountains. But oh well. Let's just head in the direction I intended to in the first place. Probably seems like a better idea. <laughs> How long have I been recording, actually? I need to be sure. Oh, almost an hour, so uh, probably should head back to Haven soon. Because uh, I definitely think I've done enough stuff around here. And we should simply just go to where a fast travel is available. So that we can head back to Haven, go to the war room, sign them some more missions, and then do more stuff. There is also a shard in this direction. So I'm also going to pick that up. Hmm. Where is it, though? There's an elf root. Oh, it's up there. Okay. That tower is impressive, even as a ruin. I wonder what dreams it might hold. There you are. Alright, five shards found here, and a landmark to mark in the name of the Inquisition after picking up some more elf roots. There we go. Saga of Tyr the Bright Axe of our mother second stanza. Found golden, gold-handed fingers greasy, jeweled rings with glitter shone. Took in tribes in times of trouble, fed them fat to weaken bone. Warriors great and great in number, sunk his swords to fight his wars. Drake scaled shirts their bodies covered, heart wine stained the salty shores. Told his tribes a tale of treasure, over sea to north it gleamed. Whispered words to drive the droves into golden cities where he dreamed. Counseled quick in dreams alone, voices wiser man ignores, pushed the tribes until they screamed, heed the dreams, and crossed the waking. Okay, more stuff for the Inquisition to claim. Alright, let's see now. Um, right. Hunger pangs. Oh, right. Gonna do that, hand in that quest, and then I will head back to Haven. Now, uh, question is, uh, how do I get past this very long wall? Ouch. Ouch. Okay, should be this way. Okay, yeah, we should be near that, uh, we should be near that village. Yeah, here we are. So, uh, hand the f the ram meat to the hunter, and, uh, then we go to the fast travel location, and, uh, get back to Haven. Uh, here you go. Here, maybe this will help. So this slightly approves. Help. With this, I can fill these hungry bellies, give these folks some hope. I didn't think much of the Inquisition, but no one else is helping like you lot. Maybe I was wrong. And we gained some power from it. Perfect. 
And uh, I'll just get rid of this marker here. Oh, and uh, we leveled up too. Perfect. I'll take a look at that in a moment. Uh, but right now, I have some... Uh, I have some business I need to take care of in a moment. Alright, let's fast travel. And uh, away. Uh, let's go to world map. There we go. Go to war room. Yes, travel there. <sighs> okay, and once we get back, we'll level up and then we'll uh, finish up uh, the video. Um, well, actually, uh, we'll level up, we'll send the agents on their mission, and then I will end the video. And that'll be that. Alright, let's see. So, uh, let's head on over to that... Oh, wait. There's something over here. Oh, the blacksmith. Okay, well, I, I'm not gonna deal with that right now. I will in, t in due time, but, um... Gotta head over to the war room and, uh, do my things there. Oh? What was going on over here? Your kind killed the most holy. Lies. Your kind let her die. Shut your mouth, mate! Enough! Knight Captain. That is not my title. We are not Templars any longer. We are all part of the Inquisition. And what does that mean exactly? You're still here? Back already, Chancellor. Haven't you done enough? I'm curious, Commander, as to how your Inquisition and its herald will restore order as you promised. Of course you are. Back to your duties, all of you. Gotta love when somebody's just all like, oh, look at me and how concerned I am as I look at all of you instead of the person I'm talking to. I really hate that, honestly. Mages and Templars were already at war. Now they're blaming each other for the Divine's death. Which is why we require a proper authority to guide them back to order. Who? You? Random clerics who weren't important enough to be at the Conclave? Yeah. The Rebel Inquisition and its so-called Herald of Andraste... Which I've already done plenty with. The proper authority failed, bitch! If the proper authority hadn't completely failed, the Conclave wouldn't have been needed. So you suggest I blame the Chancellor and exalt a murderer? Ye what a yeah. justice! That won't help restore order in the here and now. <laughs> order will never be restored so long as this rebellion is allowed to fester. Mm-hmm. Colin, why is he Colin, here? Why are you allowing the Chancellor to stay? Clearly, your Templar knows where to draw the line. He's toothless. There's no point turning him into a martyr simply because he runs at the mouth. The Chancellor's a good indicator of what to expect in Val Royo, however. Uh, fair, I suppose. But can we please just kick him out at the very least? How widespread is the violence between mages and Templars? Impossible to say. Your organization flouting the Chancellor's authority will not help matters. Well, I think we've done pretty well. Destroyed, I imagine the war between mages and Templars is renewed with interest. Okay, but who killed the Divine? The Mages and Templars are fighting, even though we don't know what really happened at the Temple of Sacred Ashes. Exactly why all this should be left to a new Divine. If you are innocent, the Chantry will establish it as so. Or we'll be happy to use someone as a scapegoat. You think nobody cares about the truth? You certainly you don't. Grieve Justinia's loss. But you won't grieve if the Herald of Andraste is conveniently swept under a carpet. Well, um, hope the trip is worth it.
Well, let's hope we find solutions and not a cathedral full of chancellors. The stuff of nightmares. Mark, if you will. I'm certain the maker is less amused. <laughs> when is the maker ever amused? I don't think he ever is, really. And, uh, what was the mission over here? Will you be able to help you something to supplies we need? Um, not... Farewell. Make a go with it. Uh, let's see. I don't know what, uh, the, uh... If you find anything we need, let me know. Oh, well. Anyway. Uh, I gotta go to the war room. We have a war to settle, my people! So let's get to it. Oh, Mother Giselle, hello. Let's just say people are frustrating me to no end. As well as it should. How can people focus on trivialities when faced with a breach? It is easy for us to imagine that mundane matters fall aside in tumultuous times. The Council of Light does not speak of feeding troops. Arranging meetings or any such mundane concerns. But every organizational detail you contend with, Andraste herself must play in. These trivialities are steps on your path to victory, even if history never remembers them. Hmm. Uh, well, I follow elven gods. <laughs> you realize that I follow my people's gods, not the Maker. Fair enough. <laughs> but Andraste lived, and her deeds, however shrouded by myth, have their basis in fact. If you do not believe the chant of light, at least consider it a map of the dangers we have faced. In any case, I pray this Inquisition prove less brutal than its predecessor. I'm certainly hoping the same thing. Um, who will be the next divine? Do you know who the Grand Clerics will choose as the next divine? It is a difficult all the obvious candidates perished with Divine Justinian at the Conclave. The Grand Clerics are terrified of the Inquisition. They will not decide soon, and I fear they will not decide wisely. Whoever is chosen needs the Inquisition's support. No one else seems likely to seal the breach. Hmm. How are the people? How are the people doing, after what happened at the Conclave? They are scared, of course. Many have lost homes or loved ones. I doubt many will sleep well until you have sealed the breach. I have offered what help I can. The rest is for the Inquisition. What more do you wish to know? Uh... What help are you offering? What are you doing to help these people? My sisters and I have been tending to the injured, as best we are able. Some refugees come with food, while others arrive empty-handed. I have helped ensure that all have enough to Beyond that, many simply wish the familiar comfort of the Chant of Light. It is little enough work to offer some comfort to those in pain. Are people elsewhere? Do you have information on people elsewhere? The refugees in the hinterlands are desperate. Without help, starvation or war will claim many lives. Villagers in Crestwood are besieged by their own dead. They have sent word begging for assistance. People are vanishing in the hills of Montpris de Lyon. It may be demons or something worse, but they are terrified. More than that, I cannot say. It is a chaotic time for all in Olay and Ferelden. But I literally just gave them food, and I killed all the mages and Templars. Uh, so they shouldn't. There shouldn't be fighting. And how are people at Haven? How are the villagers in Haven doing? They are terrified. Many of them came here because the war between the mages and the Templars destroyed their homes. In their minds, the death of the Divine has destroyed any chance of peace. To that, at the breach. Farmers have fled their fields. If we do not restore order, half of Thalas may starve. Hmm. Well, thank you, and goodbye. Farewell. Farewell. Alright, then I wait. War room time! Let's see what we got going on here, people. We got things that need to be done. Let's take a look at the Feralden again, because we still have missions that need to be done there. Hard and high Varks, Revenge. Just got the Storm Coast, what addressing Elvins. 
Anything new we don't already know about? No, nothing. Rescue soldiers missing in Freldon. Where's the uh, where's the mission for my clan? Black and poor and voices on the winds. Uh, speak of a new power brought in the world. Inquisition, they whisper. An ancient name restored. A memory rekindled and transformed into a blaze of hope. I hear the whispers and summon the fires of the Inquisition here in the depths beneath the city of chains. Countless mysteries hide in shadows in anticipation of a light. Come, the Black Emporium awaits. Xenon, the antiquarian, uh, must spend his days composing melodramatic invitations to his establishment. I imagine being stuck in a chair for centuries leaves one somewhat lacking for entertainment. This particular message was hand-delivered by a cloaked figure at twilight, precisely as the sun disappeared between the, beneath the peaks. My men spy the courier lurking about out, uh, our outer gates for at least an hour waiting for sunset. A servant under the command of some very specific instructions, I assume. That aside, I would encourage a visit to the Black Emporium. The antiquarian's hoard is legendary. Only those he deems worthy ever lays a, uh, lay eyes upon it. The champion of Kirkwall received an invitation once and reported, among other things, a strange mirror that could transform even flesh and bone. Who knows? We may uncover something that aids the battle against Corypheus. Liliana. You'll need passage across the Waking Sea to Kirkwall. That is easily arranged. Hmm. Well, we can't really do anything about this right now. Let's see. Address a nobleman's concern. Uh, am I to understand that you are in charge of the soldiers trampling on my lawns, providing food and refuge to the scrabble of filth burrowing into my land? A plague on you, sir, for spitting in the face of an honest petitioner for taking advantage of my distress. Did my wretched neighbor, Van, Dra Van Traft, whisper in your ear? Tell me what he paid you so that I may at least know the price of treachery, sir. My only consultation is that a few of the rank and file have gone to join your farce of an inquisition. And uh, the rewards I received are uh, 60 influence. I accept that happily. <laughs> oh wait, oops, not what I wanted to do. Uh, hard and high town. My dear Liliana, your author friend is truly a mystery. Our search uncovered only a string of foreign accounts. The trail of coin led from Antiva to Tevinter to the free marches in Orlay. Someone hit their tracks well, but not well enough. Your writer is in Kirkwall, and remember, you owe me a favor, and we get an amulet of power from that. All right. And gather coin. Our efforts bore fruit. A portion of the profits will be passed to you. Use it wisely, Harold, and we get 106 gold. Excellent. Very nicely done, everyone. And, uh, let's see. Scout the Storm Coast. Scout the Hinterlands. Rescue soldiers missing in Feralden. Uh, we kind of need to go to Orlay, though, don't we? Yeah, we do. Address the Chantry in Val Royale. Investigate the Shards. Ooh, we also need to do that. But, uh, let's investigate... Let's address the Chantry in Val Royale. Recommended levels 4 to 7. Um, uh, we'll do that next time, though. Um... I'm surprised there aren't any missions over here, though. Do I not get to contact my clan? I guess not. I guess... Oh, no, wait, no, wait. Contact clan level... Uh, it was just hidden in the darkness. Okay. Um, let's see. The Dalish respect deeds, not words. Let my elven agents deliver something the clan needs to show of good faith. Your people must be approached carefully. One of our elven scribes could deliver a message and share news of the Inquisition's fair treatment. My troops can deliver news of your safety and make it clear that the Inquisition should be taken seriously. I'm gonna go with Liliana. Let's see what I know you got this one. And, uh, I think... Uh, we'll go ahead and also offer Josephine's services for gathering coin. And, uh, I think that's pretty much all we can do at the moment. So, uh, that'll be it for the moment. Alright, more influence, yay! And, uh, we'll end the video here, so I hope you all enjoyed this video. Give that like button a stab if you did. Subscribe if you want more death in your life. Be sure the bell is tolling for the Ian Varric approves. Uh, so, should give you some hints uh, for the video. Varric approves, so you should too. And uh, until next time, rest in peace. Bye!